Hello and welcome to Daily Politics, reaching you from Trust TV here in Abuja. I am Suleiman Suleiman. Today our discussion will focus on Nigeria-South Africa relations. Nigeria and South Africa are the two leading economies on the continent. In fact, some people call them Africa's superpowers. And yet, relations between the two countries have often been a mixed bag of highs and lows. As one diplomatic tension has followed another since majority rule in South Africa began in 1994. On stated rivalries over continental political issues, national economic policies, and even football games have all caused a strain every now and then between the two nations, as each tries to stamp its influence first on the continent and to reach out into the world. Yet, despite the half and puff, bilateral and trade relations between both countries have remained very strong. South African companies are thriving in Nigeria, and there is a lot of talk that some Nigerian companies have moved into South Africa. Many Nigerians are working in South African universities. And above all, last week, President Muhammad Buhari called for an end to what he called unnecessary rivalry between the two countries. So today on Daily Politics, we ask, why are these continental giants always on each other's throats? Can both compete and cooperate at the same time? And in light of the global co politics of Omicron, that is the new COVID-19 variant, how can they work together for more common interests? Joining me today are His Excellency, the South African High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Tami Dennis Mseleku, and Ambassador Dahiru Suleiman, a veteran of the Nigerian Foreign Service who served in nine countries, retiring as Nigeria's Ambassador to Sudan. Welcome to Daily Politics, gentlemen. Thank you. For thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. But, thank you very much. But before we get into the program uh, proper, we'll take a minute to bring you, as usual, a roundup of politics in the news. Stay with us. The Senate has called Nigeria's inclusion on the British government's red list of countries unjustified. On Saturday, the United Kingdom placed travel restrictions on flights coming from Nigeria with the Secretary of State for Health, Sajid Javid, stating that only UK, Irish citizens and resident permit holders would be allowed into the country. The Senate, however, in a motion moved by Senator Ike Kweirimadu titled Need for Government of the United Kingdom to Remove Nigeria from COVID-19 Red List, agreed that Nigeria's addition to the list was without justification. In a statement made available to newsmen, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan called on the British Parliament to put pressure on the government to consider removing Nigeria from its red list. The Niger State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party on Tuesday named Zainat Zain of Kure as replacement for former Governor Babangida Aliyu as party leader. This was contained in a statement signed by the PDP State Publicity Secretary Suleiman Aliyu and made available to newsmen in Mina. The state PDP Secretary said Kure was unanimously endorsed to replace Aliyu, whom the party said has automatically returned to his position as party member. The state auditor, Mamman Suleja, who moved in a motion on behalf of the state executive committee after stakeholders' meeting said in appreciation of the contributions of Senator Zain of Kure to the development of the party, she is endorsed as a leader of the PDP in the state. Justice Babin Gida Hassan of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory of Abuja on Tuesday fixed December 17 to commence hearing in a suit filed by an equipped member of the All Progressives Congress, Okusi C. Emekango, seeking an order setting aside all actions and decisions taken by the Governor May Malabuni led caretaker extraordinary convention planning committee of the party. In the suit filed by his lawyer, Oba Madwabuchi, the plaintiff is further seeking an order of court dissolving the committee known as and called the Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee. He listed all the defendants to include the APC Isiaka Oyebola, Ken Namani, Stella Okereti, Governor Sani Bello, Dr. James Lalo, Senator Abubakar Yusuf, Honor Wakin Yami Olayade, David Leon, Abba Ali, Professor Tahir Mamman, Ismail Ahmad and Senator James Akban Udwaidaher. 
Ongu stated that he wanted to contest the position of the national chairman of the APC in 2018 when the term of national chairman of the party expired but was prevailed upon to allow Adam Soshomale to be returned unopposed. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV and we are discussing the very important matter of Nigeria and South African relations. Usually I start from my right and then I end on my left. So I'll continue with that uh, uh, tradition. And Ambassador uh, Dahiru, um, uh, 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 maybe some people have said that part of the you know fraught relationships you know between Nigeria and and and, and you know it's like sibling issues, a family, but still you know issues. Now, some people are suggesting that part of the reason is Nigeria's misplaced expectations, that because it supported South Africa during the, the apartheid regime, then South Africa would need to hold a permanent state, be in a permanent state of gratitude to Nigeria. Is it not time, as a diplomat, that Nigeria ditched that thinking? No. We have to look at this issue from many angles. Okay. The first angle mm. is that in any human relations, mm. there are bound to be problems from time to time. Okay. Or what I may call irritants okay. in relationship. You get it even in your own house. Mm. But the most important thing is for you to know how to manage okay. whatever problem you have. Mm. The second problem is that, as you rightly pointed out, mm. South Africa and Nigeria mm. are the giants of the continent of sub-saharan africa okay. i'm being deliberate mm. by me referring to sub-saharan africa okay because the arab maghreb mm. they are only in africa geographically okay they may not but, agree but emotionally mm. they are arabs as part of the Middle East. Okay. So, taking this into account, mm. removing Egypt, mm. which is the preeminent mm. country in the Middle East, yes. or what we call the Arab Maghreb, Maghreb. Mm. you are left with only Nigeria and South Africa. Okay. And now, people tend to forget mm. that these two African countries, or mm. two African giants mm. from sub-Saharan Africa, mm. they are really the face of Africa mm. to the outside world. Mm. Not Egypt, mm. not Libya, not Algeria, not Morocco. Mm. In this connection, mm. these two countries inevitably mm. must work together, mm. must cooperate mm. in order to advance the cause of the black people. Okay. Our late Prime Minister, when he addressed the UN General Assembly in 1960, yes. mm. he said, Nigeria had taken upon itself mm. to support the cause of the black race wherever they are in the world. Mm. And that was why coming to home, mm. Nigeria lent its support mm. to the decolonization effort in Southern Africa. Mm. And the ending of apartheid mm in South Africa. Hmm. We were lucky 
to have a dynamic foreign policy at that time. Okay. Nigeria was designated as a frontline state. Mm. Although Nigeria is not geographically in Southern Africa, mm. but because of its activist mm. role. Then apartheid crumbled. The black South Africans for whom we fought okay. for their independence or freedom mm. from the yoke mm. of apartheid mm. took over mm. political leadership. Mm. But economic control mm. has remained in the hands of the white minority. Okay. I've been to South Africa. Okay. Mm. It's a developed country mm. with beautiful infrastructure. Mm. So, after independence, it became natural for the extremely mobile mm. and, and, and adventurous Nigerians mm. to want to go to South mm. Africa. But is Nigeria expecting too much to think that, because that's that's the core of the question, is Nigeria expecting too much to think Na that, yes. because you supported South Africa in the past, you yeah. know, that means they would remain, you know, in a state of gratitude to you forever? Uh, yes. Because even in personal relations, that can be quite tricky. Yes, we, um, uh, I'm on coming to that. Okay. Mm. Because the I want to bring uh, yes, the, His Excellency. Uh, I'm happy the well. South African yes. High Commissioner is here. Yes. The mistake, the way I see it, okay. is that because we did this or did that for South Africa, mm. therefore South Africa must be indebted to Nigeria. I don't see it that way. Okay. What we did, we did it for the cause of the black man. Interesting. To be free hmm. from the kind of degradation, molestation, and the rest of it that he was subjected to hmm. in his own country. Hmm. But some people said, oh, we did this, we did that. I was a civil servant. Hmm. My part of my salary hmm. was deducted. To in help support of anti apartheid struggle. The struggle That's interesting. in South Africa. Mm. Students also contributed. Ordinary Nigerians also contributed. Mm. Mm. So let me And South mm. Africa mm. Nigerian government allowed South African students to come and get free mm. university. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the details. Okay. Uh, but, 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 um, Ambassador, uh, but Mr. High Commissioner, does it is there a feeling? you know, within South Africa, that, well, we know that Nigeria supported uh, South Africa at some point in time, but South Africa is no longer under an apartheid uh, system. You now have a democracy and therefore new goals, new objectives, new ways of relating to, to people around you. So is there a feeling that that part is gone after all? And the apartheid struggle was an internationalist agenda supported by people from all over the world, actually. So is there a feeling like that in South Africa? And does it inform the relationships between Nigeria and South Africa? I think uh, as uh, uh, my respected uh, ambassador here has said, yes. I think the danger mm. uh, that we experience in this discourse mm. is that we talk about it as if this was one country supporting another. Mm. Whereas the struggle for decolonization, mm. which was led by the founding fathers, mm. the Pan-Africanists of, of mm. Africa, mm. was about the liberation of Africa. Yes. Uh, of, from Cape to Cairo, for that yes. matter. Mm. And as you know, these founding fathers actually had the principle that Africa will not be free unless all, all of it of is Africa, free, including, including Southern, including Southern Africa. Mm. 
so so the support for for the decolonization of Africa and mm. the support for Southern Africa and the anti apartheid struggle mm. was part of that decolonization struggle. Mm. We have actually decolonized. It's not about uh, South Africa mm. end of apartheid. It's about the African continent is now decolonized. Mm. And the next phase of that decolonization mm. is African development, economic development, and taking our place in the world yes. as Africa. Yes. Whether um, in that context we then have to relate to one another in terms of that agenda, because mm. we related to, to each other, one mm. another, in terms of the agenda of decolonization. Yes. Not, not in terms of the agenda of a quid pro quo. Mm. I did this for you, you Therefore did this you for did me. For there. Me. That, that was not in the minds of our forefathers. Mm. If we, if we went that way, mm. then South Africa would be indebted to so many countries. It would not just be Nigeria. Mm. Uh, in Africa, it would be countries that actually had our people living in them, mm. particularly the frontline states that actually bore mm. the but brand. Nigeria always regarded itself as a frontline state. The, yes, but I, I know. But mm. bearing the brand of being physically a frontline state, okay. unlike... To uh, absorb people. Uh, mm. Not only absorbing people, but mm. absorbing attacks, okay. the killings from okay. the, anti, uh, the, um, the apartheid, apartheid machinery. Mm. So we, we, we are indebted mm. to those people, to those countries mm. for really supporting our liberation struggle. Mm. But if we were to actually base our relationship mm. in the African continent on that struggle, then everybody would be indebted to somebody because somebody helped somebody in relation to, to decolonization historically. Mm. Our approach as South Africa is we have a duty as a result of that. Mm. The mission is incomplete if we do not really ensure that we liberate South Africa from neocolonialism mm. and ensure that we take our place in the world. Mm. And that's the kind of relationship over the years we've been building mm. between ourselves and Nigeria and other countries, but in particular with Nigeria. Mm. Our agenda is we are sister countries mm. and we are in this African continent and fortunate to mm. actually have the economic muscle, the leadership mm. uh, that we, we have in terms of uh, uh, our position in Africa. Mm. It is our duty yes. to work together for the liberation of Africa, the total liberation of Africa and its people. And that is what has been the agenda. Mm. In the process, mm. as Ambassador has said, there will be irritations, and some of them are more, mm. more people to people irritations, mm. which then government, are, government to government. are exaggerated into <coughs> government. Governments always say, how do we deal with these things? But at a government level, you'll find very little that actually is an irritant, one or two things, but mainly it's actually people to people mm. uh, irritations, and that's where we, we need to deal with, with those. Thank you very much. I, I, I really like this uh, dimension of people to people versus uh, uh, government to government, because in, in that's, 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 that really is a framework for understanding how Nigeria and South Africa have always had this Jojo uh, between them. But, 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 but in any case, there's a connection between people and government in the respective mm -hmm. countries. You know, the government exists because of the people, you know, to serve uh, the interest of the people. But in, 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 there have been many specific instances in Nigeria where, like he said, people to people issues have led to government to government issues from the uh, case of the Ogoni issues, you know, in the 1996, uh, even down to football uh, uh, issues, again, around the same time also, but also uh, Nigeria withdrawing from participating in, in the competition in, in, in South Africa. And more recently, because of most South African presence uh, uh, in Nigeria, you see issues where people-to-people -to -people issues in South Africa will lead to reprisals, attacks, and, and, and similar uh, incidents here in Nigeria, targeting specifically uh, South African uh, businesses, which... I don't know whether it's luckily or unluckily are quite many and large, so mm -hmm. they are conspicuous. You know, how 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 are African two African countries? How do we arrive at this stage to the extent where the African Union 
you know, the bilateral, uh, by national commissions and all that, are not able to contend this because this crisis are happening quite frequently, like every two, three years. During the visit of the South African president, okay. the binational commission met. Mm. I was very happy when President Buhari mm. spoke about people to people cooperation. Okay. Or the people of South Africa mm. and the people of Nigeria engaging each other. Mm. I am happy that he made that statement. When the people become friendly with each other, mm. it makes things a lot better for everybody. Mm. But the government had to has to the two governments have to set the tone okay if the two governments set the tone mm. then people to people cooperation will become more meaningful okay as have it has been said many times and i was present when late Winnie Mandela addressed over 10 years ago the Daily Trust annual dialogue. Mm. When she said the people in South Africa are not aware of what Nigeria did or the sacrifices made. Mm. Interesting. So mm. My reaction at that time was that if you know what effort are you making to enlighten the people, already Nigerians are obsessed about their sacrifices. What <laughs> was done for South Africa, yes. but the South Africans are not aware. Interesting. So let them be made aware. But in making them aware, mm. you mean the South Africans aware? I'm very, very cautious about what I'm saying. Mm. Go on. Sir. We have to be extremely careful. Mm. You do not say because you have helped your num your neighbour, mm. and therefore it confers on you unfettered mm. access to your neighbour. No. Mm. We have so many Nigerians that have swarmed mm -hmm. South Africa. Mm. I use the word deliberately. Mm. Now, part of the irritation we are talking about is more from the South Africans. And in my opinion, justifiably. Okay. You have come to my own country. Mm. Go into legitimate business mm. or trade. Mm. We have categories of Nigerians in South Africa. Mm. We have the professors in the, the various universities. Yes. Mm. They hire these professors. Mm. There is no problem with them. Then you have other professionals mm. who are applying their trade, whatever it is, mm. whether they are op operating a restaurant mm. or tailoring shop mm. or mechanical shop. Interesting. Mm. But then you have others mm. who you don't know what they are doing. Okay. But they are living well. What is the source of their income? Their wealth. Mm. And this is where the South Africans are not happy. Okay. We have these people who don't appear to have any legitimate business. Mm. Riding expensive cars, buying expensive houses, mm. marrying our beautiful women. Mm. 
Okay. <laughs> so it, it is not, mm. it, it's just human nature. <laughs> the African woman. We cannot run away from We cannot run away from Yes, it. yes. They are taking our women. I, yes. I, 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 I was yes. in Kenya. Mm. I was confronted with the same complaint. Yes. yes. Mm. And this mm. is the area of the irritation mm. I'm talking about. Mm. If we want people to people cooperation, fair and good, mm. but areas of irritation people who have no legitimate business to be in south africa should not be there mm. thank you these are the people who have given nigeria a terrible image mm. thank you very much but, but two two key things uh, from what he has said is nigerian organized crime in south africa and the rhetoric of identity particularly nationalist uh, identity these are two issues that you know tend to cause tensions between the Nigerians and South Africa in, in across bo 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 place. I think I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance to react to, 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 to these two issues, particularly that of the organized, first, that of the organized crime. Because even before you have a large contingent of Nigeria in South Africa, South Africa was already known for high levels of crime in its own right by south africans not necessarily nigerians that's mm -hmm. there's that one mm -hmm. and then the idea that they are taking our women is a rhetoric that has been <laughs> employed everywhere in the world you know mm -hmm. even within nigeria actually mm -hmm. from one part of nigeria to yeah, another people yes. use it you know yes. against oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. each other so to what extent do these perceptions you know among both nigerians and south africans kind of cause you know the the strain in our relationships and maybe most significantly as a diplomat what are both countries doing about this well um thank you very much yes. you know i'm i i am very pleased yes can i say for the first time i hear a nigerian mm. speaking like the ambassador about these issues thank you because the tendency of uh, our nigerian whether it's the media mm. or the, the spokespersons yes they emphasize more on the good Nigerians okay. <laughs> and less so on the irritating Nigerians yes. who, are, who, who are actually, who, not, not only Nigerians, mm. irritating criminals. And yes. I say, mm. unfortunately, unfortunately, those kinds of people mm. would actually be operating okay. in the areas of the poorest of the poor. And when communities in those areas begin to see the impact of what they are doing mm. on their own children, no amount of government mm. educating them about how what Nigerians did for them in the past mm. will justify what they are doing for them today. Interesting. So when you approach it from the point of view, why are you doing this to us because we did this to you, mm. then the... the the, 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 the response you'll get is you did that yeah. not in order to do this thing here that we are doing now. Yeah. Our approach as a country is to yeah. say, let's not label criminals. Okay. They may come from Nigeria or mm. Pakistan mm. or South Africa itself. Mm. Let's not label criminals. They're just criminals. Okay. Let's deal with them as criminals. Mm. Well, ordinary people will say, but we didn't have much of this crime until these foreigners and it's just like not just nigerians mm. came into our township okay yes. and so the reaction mm. uh, which then relates to how our government then responds to that mm. unfortunately we also realize that our law enforcement agencies are also faced with the problem that within them mm. they are also recruitable mm. to be part of those criminal Certainly. syndicates mm. and so our Certainly. people Certainly. begin to say our people begin to say the police are in cahoots with them mm. they know the criminals mm. then if we had a stronger mm. and that's what we are trying to do a stronger kind of response from the police side to criminals you would never hear about nigerian and must go home or this that because they know the the police are dealing with criminals and that's it and they are stopping the criminal activity here so this issue is not it, it becomes an issue of yeah. foreigners yeah. and you know the tendency um, of 
uh, our Nigerian uh, patriots or our Nigerian uh, compatriots is to club together, especially those that he's talking about. Mm. They tend to, to actually buy a big building or take a whole area Mm. Uh, and then it becomes a kind of loud about it and it becomes a niger no not the, that kind who, who mm. are you know who are successful yes that's okay. another kind mm. but this one is the people who are behind them mm. are not known but when you when you go to one area you you find that they they have been able to buy all the buildings that are there mm. and the activities that are taking place in those buildings mm. everybody knows they are not legitimate mm. activities. Mm. So then you have a situation where an area has been branded. Mm. Th this is a, a kind of Nigerian Nigeria criminal, what have you, and so on. Interesting. And so mm. anybody who talks Nigeria is talking about this criminal, just like mm. you, you'll talk about the Chinese, whatever, uh, yes. and so on. So for us, these issues are issues we need to confront together. And that is why you asked, what are the governments doing about it? In 2019, when President Buhari uh, visited South, South Africa, Africa. Mm. one of the issues was to say, how can we prevent these things from exploding? In the first because place. when they explode, in the perceptions of the people, mm. no matter what I tell you, I can tell you, for example, that there's a, there was a perception that n many Nigerians were killed, what have you, and mm. so on. It mm. doesn't matter how much I could actually say mm. publicly. Please what tell me, please yeah. tell me how many Nigerians were actually injured or killed, what yes. have you, mm. and that no one would actually produce more than two or three, mm. and some of them proven to have been killed by Nigerians themselves. Mm. But the perception here. Mm was that, you know, these are Nigerians, but they are being killed. Team. So it doesn't matter what I say. Mm. So let's first prevent this. Okay. And then we said, okay, let's create a mechanism, mm. which is an early warning mechanism, okay. number one, for us to prevent that. Mm. Number two, let's, let's link the embassies of mm. Nigeria, the consulate, mm. and, the, and the embassy itself, mm. to specific police that we know are not the corrupt type. Okay. That will respond immediately okay. to or any just, uh, to any is issue missing. like that, you know. But more importantly, the ambassadors and the uh, consulate mm. actually started saying, "Look, we we will engage with legitimate Nigerians mm. for us together to isolate these elements because these are the ones that are are bringing us a bad name." So. Most of the time when you realize it's first the consulate that will say, no, 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 this has nothing to do with xenophobia. These people mm. were fighting alone and, and they were, you know. So there, there are mechanisms that are actually meant to deal with this thing before it explodes, it explodes. and becomes a very big thing. For the government. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Uh, I think when we come back, uh, uh, we'll be taking uh, uh, a short break. When we come back, we'll be looking at just to go a little further, for example, President Buhari mentioned recently mm -hmm. that Nigeria has a special relationship with South Africa. That was the first time that term was used to describe the relationship between South Africa and Nigeria, you know. Although, and then that, that reminds us of how Britain and the United States tend to refer to each other that they have a special relationship uh, with each other and of course France and Germany within Europe or within the EU as well. So all of these could be models that Nigeria and South Africa could, uh, uh, could take. But we'll be discussing more of this uh, when we come back uh, from back. Thank you for staying with us. We'll just take one minute. We'll be back. Welcome back. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV. If you are just joining us, you can also follow us on all our social media platforms on YouTube, uh, 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 Facebook, and of course, Instagram as well. Uh, today we are discussing Nigeria South Africa relationships with a focus primarily on what way out. How do we better manage 
this relationship. That's uh, uh, our major focus. So, uh, Ambassador Dahiru, let me come back to you. Yes. He's mentioned uh, uh, different uh, relations, I mean, different uh, 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 steps and initiatives that, that both Nigeria and South Africa have taken in, you know, ensuring that early warning signals are detected for conflict or for any kind of skirmish and that there are mechanisms in place to prevent things from reaching con uh, uh, conflagrations of the kind that we both or we all don't uh, want between the countries. But okay. let yes. me start by saying, yes, in the old books of diplomacy, mm. you read where they say a diplomat is a person that is sent abroad to go and lie on behalf of, of his government. country. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's no longer the case. No longer the case, yes. Okay. In this age of ICT, mm -hmm. perhaps the ambassador will not even know what is happening in his country, but a foreigner mm -hmm. who has tuned to Nigeria or even is, is watching mm -hmm. the television from his living room yes. is already knowing what is happening True. in Nigeria. What I try to do is to bring out issues. Mm. If you want us to remain good friends, mm. we should be honest and sincere with each other. Mm. We should not shy away from telling each other mm. the truth, no matter how bitter it may be. Mm. It is. Okay. Now, the South Africa mission in Nigeria has very little role to play in this people to people cooperation. Interesting. Because there are few South Africans living in Nigeria. Mm. The, their mission can easily organize them. Mm. But when you you take the Nigerian mission in South Africa, yeah. where you have more than one million, two million, three million people, mm. and everybody has one agenda or the other to pursue, mm. then it becomes very difficult to organize the people. Interesting. But I'm not saying mm. that efforts should not be made. Okay. Mm. Our consulate in Johannesburg. Mm and the High Commission in Pretoria okay. should make sure mm. that they get, they become fully engaged okay. with the activities of, of Nigerians, Nigerians living in mm. South Africa. Mm. But given your experience in Nigeria's foreign service, yes. do we have that? Pardon? Given your experience in Nigeria's foreign service, to what extent can you say that uh, missions in foreign countries do engage with Nigerians yes. in those countries, oh, okay. South Africa included. Okay, I gi I will give you yes two examples mm. or three examples because there are Nigerians complaining that even to get a Nigerian passport for their children, I have had that situation myself. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's you know, sometimes it is true, sometimes it is not true. Okay, mm. because our people like to complain. Okay, when I was in Abidjan. Mm. We organized the Nigerian community. Mm. We had about 3.5 million Nigerians. Nigerians. I'm talking between 1988 and 1990. We organized them. Mm. And they, until I left, they were living peacefully with their hosts. Mm. When I was in Vienna, mm. My job was made very light, mm. simply because most of the Nigerians in Vienna were professionals, working with either OPEC mm -hmm. or United Nations. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay, And they didn't have any time for mm. any mischief or yeah. anything like that. Sure. When I was in Pakistan, I had a difficult time. Mm because the few nigerians that were living there mm. 
did not even want to have anything to do with the with the, with the, with the mission or the embassy mm. and they did not want because they did not want anybody to know what they were doing they were up to mm -hmm. until when we had a very sad experience mm. so but, but the, 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 the issue is, is he, you talked about telling each other the bitter truth. Part yeah. of that bitter truth is that South Africa is getting more out of Nigeria-South Africa relationships, economically at least, given the balance of trade between the two countries. You know, the, uh, the trade last year was 2.6 billion from Nigeria to South Africa, all to 95% of, 99% of that was in oil, you know, and minerals and, and so on. But South African uh, uh, companies are really doing well, well in Nigeria, and Nigeria. Doing <laughs> well, better in Nigeria than in any other African countries where they, they, they are located, including in South Africa. So how special can such a relationship be? How friendly can such a relationship be? I like the ambassador. I like the way you, you, you put it. The ambassador said yes. uh, we if we are friends, we are friends because we tell each other the truth. Yes. Okay, so uh, let's take that truth. Yes. For example. Mm. In twenty nineteen, um, again, uh, President Buhari and the delegation mm. raised this issue sharply as they, they should. Okay. And in 2019, they were concrete. They had two examples of companies mm. that had knocked in the door of South Africa. Yes. Eh? It was F, F Peace mm. and Access Bank. Yes. On the banking center, mm. Access Bank was really finding it difficult. Mm. And on the, on the side of aviation, mm. Air Peace. Yes. By the time, the interesting thing for me is that at the time, mm. I was just an ambassador designate, yes. High Commissioner designate. Yeah, I listened right, yeah. to the, I listened mm. to this, and I said, yeah. my first assignment yes. is to deal with this issue. Yeah, absolutely. When I arrived here, I went to Access Bank, mm. met the leadership, and they said, actually, we're about to finalize our thing there. It, mm. Give us another three months. There's no problem. Mm. We've solved our problems. Interesting. Mm. Then I went to a piece. Mm. Same story, they gave me the date. They said it's not South Africa now. Mm. It's us. We haven't really mm. taken up the opportunity. Mm. So we're still planning. We'll announce the date for when we'll fly to South Africa. Mm. Both of them have done that. Airpeace flies to, I'm flying to South Africa via Airpeace uh, just in a week's time. Mm. Federal are supposed to fly today, but we postponed. Mm. And then Access Bank is in South Africa. In fact, I'm attending the Apollo uh, uh, Games in South Africa. Some people will say all of this does not amount to one South African But let me, let, I'm yeah. coming to that. I'm mm. saying, the, the point I'm making is yes. that mm. once we begin to say mm. these are the companies, okay. Nigerian companies that mm. are unable to get into South Africa, mm. then we will be talking. Dangote is in South Africa. Mm. The challenge here is that we have a lot of uh, uh, people who have muscle to invest mm. in Nigeria. Mm. The, the companies themselves are not necessarily forthcoming to say, actually, I want to go to South Africa. Mm. Uh, if, they, if they were, and there were obstacles, they would be dealt with. Yes, okay. Uh, mm. Because, so that's the, that's the mm. issue. I, I, so the I understand high as well. I understand mm. that, mm. yes, I understand mm. that the perception because we have these big companies here yeah, and there yeah, yeah, yeah. the, 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 there must be some kind of quid pro quo that yes. let's have an equal yes. access yes. if we can concretize that mm. together and mm. say this company wants to go to south africa these are the obstacles then we deal with mm. concrete reality uh, other than the the reality that says but why don't we have mm. The, because the answer may not lie in South Africa, it may lie in Nigeria back here. As, as such, yeah, in the companies themselves. Mm. To, to tell you the truth, the South African companies that came here may have been supported by government, but they came themselves. It was them understanding mm. the market and then saying to government, can you help us through here? Mm. Now, 
let's see that kind of effort. We've got those that have done that, and they're in South Africa, and they've been in South Africa for quite mm -hmm. quite a while. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it, but again, the balance of trade is, is still in the favor of Nigeria. You that's can only nice. say it's only because of oil, yes, but. Uh, Thank yeah, you. That's, let's do that's, that. That's a good uh, diplomatic answer, isn't it? <laughs> Everything <laughs> about us is diplomacy. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, uh, it's not, it's not a lie for my country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you know, he's diplomatic diplomat. <laughs> yeah, so he has to speak diplomatically. <laughs> <laughs> as I am on my own. <laughs> but you still speak diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, as I said I know there are two diplomats and one journalist. So <laughs> it's, it's tough for the yeah, journalist. Sure. So then again, the, the another truth yes. I still have to, to continue with you a little yes another truth is bitter truth is that the, the, the South African companies when they operate here in Nigeria they try to shortchange the Nigerian government the state itself you know sometimes because of the nature of how our country works big in connivance with Nigerian government officials no 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 doubt but even as recently as two or three months ago there were accusations of not paying tax or not remitting tax to hundreds of billions of 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 of, of naira is isn't that also how can that help a special relationship i am dealing now yes with this particular reality that south african companies are pulling out of nigeria really a number of them are pulling out of Nigeria and there are two reasons one is in our view mm. because they didn't do a real understanding of this market and its dynamics mm. and they are operating in terms of the South African mm. and Please other the dynamics the yeah. dyna the, the, I'm, the coming to, I'm coming to that and yes. it's this market and its dynamics ne? Yes. the other thing is the market itself has got certain constraints, yeah. which is why our president actually raised this with President Buhari. Thank you. Just like President Buhari was saying, please enable our companies. Mm. Our president was saying, please enable our com companies. Mm. One, the, you, you're referring to the tax regime. Mm. They are always constantly being engaged with this accusation of tax evasion and this are two billions. Or, how do you allow a company mm. Uh, as a country yes. to reach a point where it owes you three trillion how, how does it get to that's that point how does it question. get to that point that's uh, a fair uh, question it means there's something wrong that is not, not yes, yes it's not the official if the, the company the, yes. if the company can reach that point mm. then there's something wrong where the companies do something wrong we don't say don't actually treat deal with them but what they are saying is let's have a predictable tax environment if we we agree that this is the tax mm. structure then let's stick to that structure let's not be hit tomorrow with something else that we were not aware of and then we negotiate mm. it comes down we negotiate because that environment doesn't help mm. two we can't repatriate our profits from here it's very big struggle to repatriate even the money and we have investors that are actually uh, expecting dividends from yeah, these things and the, these are actually serious constraints yeah. so the issue here if we are telling the truth mm. is that this market is different from their market in, in their market has got very structured tax regimes mm. they, they they are given an evaluation every year these are the mm. things that they know every, exactly what they are supposed to do mm. secondly there are no shortcuts in in, in, in if they go get to those mm. shortcuts then the regulators will on will be on top of them do the, the, their job any business if you give them a space to go the shortcut route mm. they may take it because yes. they actually want to make money yes. but we say to our companies mm. if you are caught doing that mm. we will be we will be the ones doing the same to you to say why did you do it then mm. but at the same time we say treat them fairly so I don't I don't believe that this perception when you see it in the headlines they owe three three trillion they owe, it's actually the true reflection of the of the issue it's an ongoing battle and that's why I'm saying some of them are pulling out thank you Shoprite is the is one of the biggest companies yes. mm. it's now owned hundred percent by by Nigerians they've mm. sold it and one of the reasons is actually constraints of the of, of on the ports mm. and all those things that are happening with all those those situations mm. so truth uh, i'm still being diplomatic <laughs> yeah, certainly and we, and we love that but you, you raise an important uh, uh, point 
that how does how do, how does it happen that a, a company or government you know up to three because it cannot be trillion nobody pays nigerian government a trillion dollar i mean a trillion naira in, in in tax in a month or in two months so it must be cumulated in, in over the, time so how does that happen that must also be regulated uh, a regulatory failure or, or breach on, on somebody's mm -hmm. pa, uh, yeah. part so what role does the nigerian government here not just the mission in in, in south africa but here you know and not just at the level of president to president mm -hmm. uh, Cyril Ramaphosa president Buhari or uh, 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 president Jonathan uh, president Zuma n not just that at the level of government officials dealing with companies and 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 and, and so on you see running a business yes you have to be adventurous mm. because business is a risk mm. Now, if you are ready to take the risk, hmm. you will be lucky to succeed. Hmm. But if you are not ready to take the risk, you may not succeed. Hmm. And then we have this issue of bureaucracy, hmm. which stifles people, people's initiatives. Hmm. And it is it has contributed in many people losing the patience to continue to pursue their dream. Mm. And then the issue of tax mm. you spoke about. Mm. Nobody wants to pay tax. Mm. And this is the reality. Yes. You get people who will go and get contract for one billion naira but they will not pay tax mm. and based on my experience in the United States I mm. served in the United States okay. mm. they can forgive you for any other crime but not over failure to pay tax okay. mm. so you have many people getting away mm. without paying tax or pay minimum mm. amount and that is why government mm. sometimes is hamstrung mm. from carrying out its responsibilities mm. because the money is not there mm. and the people who should pay mm. are not paying mm. like the recent case of uh, people owning private jets yes mm. but they don't want to pay mm. the necessary tax mm. tax I hold the view mm. that until when we decide to be ruthless mm. yes. with anybody, irrespective of his position, mm. we will continue to have problem. Mm. We should do what other countries mm. are doing. Okay. Let us study what how they are making it. Mm. If you go to the Scandinavian countries, mm. they are almost socialist. Mm. But people are willing to pay because they see the services being rendered. Mm. Now, if you are asked to pay tax, you don't have... The, the, the problem is the government officials who create bottlenecks around payment of taxes or try to cut corners you know in ways that because one <coughs> important point that the ambassador mentioned it is that to have a predictable tax regime mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't help a company that you pay this amount of tax this month and the next month somebody is giving you a different bill so yeah, the, what role does our own government officials play no, the, how can they better our government officials yes mm. i was in government mm. and i know mm. This, some people are not serving national interest. Mm. I was in a bilat air bilateral agreement discussion. Mm. And I was shocked. I was stupefied mm. by some of the things that I was observing. 
So, until there is a total reorientation re of the civil service mm. or the public service as a whole, mm. government will continue to have problem. And that is why I'm saying we are not making good example of lawbreakers. Mm. Thank you. Uh, the, 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 I'm just being informed that um, our time is up and I have quite a few uh, more questions I wanted to put to the, the ambassador. So maybe I'll just, uh, I wanted to also talk about the continental uh, uh, trade for yeah. Africa, but also again about what South Africa might be doing about public diplomacy in Nigeria because uh, recently on Facebook, I noticed something where South Africa said that they are withdrawing their Miss World uh, uh, a contestant from Israel because Israel is practicing apartheid and they were just coming out of it. They will not support it. And 95% of the comments were anti South African and pro Israeli, you know. And I was wondering where then so much for African uh, 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 brotherhood, you know, uh, in that because it was politics. There was no. This is, uh, you know, and, and, and so on. But the continental uh, 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 trade, free trade across uh, Africa, isn't that a policy again to further, uh, 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 you know, increase, I mean, grow South Africa at the expense of uh, its <laughs> friend and special <laughs> friend Nigeria? <laughs> yes. the, in the interesting thing is that the, 60 seconds. the, the mm -hmm. Africa Free Trade Agreement Thank didn't you. come from South Africa. It's our. All of us. Okay. Eh? The African Union. But our approach to it in relation to Nigeria and mm. South Africa is that we tend to, to lose more, mm. both of us, mm. if that thing doesn't work well. We have to come together mm. and say, what is it that, that actually m should make it work well? Mm. And that's when Nigeria will say, but we fear you, as you say. Mm. You are more industrialized. You're going to do this, that, and the other. And that's the conversation that our ministers of trade are having already. Mm. They are saying, okay, so where can we strengthen you as Nigeria? Yeah. Mm. Bring, bring the kind of capacities we yeah, have we already have. Mm. so that you... But it doesn't mean that you don't have capacities that you can give to us. Mm. But if we have more, let's talk about it. Mm. You, you say this area and that area and that area. But we must dictate, if I may use that word, the level of standards that we want to put yes. so that we don't become the dumping ground. Mm -hmm. That's a conversation. If we don't do that together, we are both going to lose. We'll be bickering about whether South Africa is going to gain you more from Nigeria and vice versa, mm -hmm. and we lose everything. Thank That's you. why mm -hmm. we, sh we need to talk together. Mm -hmm. And our approach is... No, we are not into trying to say we want to get into Nigeria by hook or by crook. Mm. We want a mutually uh, beneficial relationship. Mm. And together, let's lead this Africa Free Trade Agreement. Thank you very much. I, I think that's a perfect uh, landing uh, and ending uh, uh, for our program today. Uh, Nigeria and South Africa, they need to work together and lead the African continent uh, to uh, greater uh, heights. I think there's no better way... Uh, to uh, uh, end the program today. This is uh, where we draw the curtain for today's program. Thank you for staying with us. And we hope that you join us again tomorrow when we meet for another edition of Daily Politics. Thank you. <laughs>